Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, have a look at this little, little fellow we've got for you today. This, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than Grayson's Seville Orange and Parisian Lime Gin. That's quite a mouthful. I think I got that right. Yeah, I did. Uh, now, this one has been recommended to me by one of my subscribers. His name is Adam Warby. So thanks for getting in touch, Adam. Um, always keen to hear from subscribers if you've got any ideas of new gins to try. So uh, Adam says he likes this one very much. And it's actually from one of these ones from, uh, where was it from? Aldi, it's from Aldi. So I always get confused between Aldi and Lidl. Um, now, I, I actually originally, when I first started making these videos and talking about Aldi gin, I thought that they were only available in this country, but it turns out you have got them in America as well. So all my American subscribers, hopefully you should be able to get this on the shelves of Aldi. And because it is from Aldi, that means it is cheap, ladies and gentlemen. This was, I think it was 15 pounds. So what's that, about $22, something like that. So this is an extremely reasonable price gin. What what size is the bottle? Let's just check. It's a 70 CL, so that's good. So sometimes they, they sound cheap, but they've only given you a 50 CL bottle, which kind of, a, that's a little bit cheeky to be honest. I don't like it when they do that, but this is a proper good size bottle. Um, and initially, when I look at this, well, straight away, I think it's a very nice, very handsome little bottle as well, I think we can say. Very, very sort of ornate uh, front there. Uh, quite sort of eye-catching on the shelf, not least because look how orange that is. I mean, that is a very orange gin. I mean, it seems to be a bit of a fashion at the moment uh, that uh, we went through sort of the pink gin phase, which we, I suppose we're kind of in, still in as well, which is very, very nice. Um, but the, the next thing seems to be orange gins. There's loads of them now appearing. You know, Malfi, I reviewed this one the other day. Uh, Beef Eater have bought one out, which I can't seem to find in the shops yet, but I will do, and I am going to review very, very soon. And the, uh, the Tanqueray Sevilla as well, of course, which is a very, very nice gin. I mean, my girlfriend demolished a bottle of that in days. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see one um, from the, from one of the lesser known gin companies, uh, shall we say. Certainly one of the, I've not really heard of them before. And um, they're so uh, kind of small, really, that um, they don't seem to have their own website, Grayson's. It just seems to be, I think it's like an in-house thing that Aldi do. So um, there's no very, very limited information to find out about. So I don't know much about the history or anything. I'm not sure. How, I'll have to try to find out how Aldi work their gins, whether they just do it themselves or they have independent companies. I don't know. But uh, so the only information I've got is actually what's written on the back of the bottle. But it's quite small, so I've uh, taken a photo of it here. So it says, um, Seville Orange and Parisian Lime Flavoured Gin. The elegantly smooth and complex taste you experience when you sip Grayson Seville Orange and Parisian Lime Flavoured Gin is described as bright, fresh citrus notes, followed by flavours of sweet lime, juniper, and zesty orange. Well, that all sounds very nice to me, but I do initially think there is a hell of a lot going on in that bottle, because orange and lime is kind of a weird combination. I've not really heard that before. Lemon and lime, fine, not a problem. Get some of that in the glass. Yep, sounds lovely. Orange and lime, I'd be like, whoa, 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 slow down down there, son, slow down. What, what, what orange and lime? Seems a bit of a straight too. I don't know, they're kind of conflicting flavours to me, but let's not have any preconceptions. Let's just see, uh, I'm, well, I'm very interested to see how they can make it work and if they can make it work. So, and of course, this one has a cork in it. So you know what that means? It's everyone's favourite part. Well, mine, Russ, really. Uh, it's the cork test. So first of all, let's see if it does the squeak when we twist it. Here we go. Not, not, not the tiniest squeak at all. That's weird. Maybe they've stopped doing the squeaks. I'm sure some of them, when I originally twisted them, did like a, a very pleasing, like a... <laughs> Never mind, don't worry about it. Let's go for the full-on pull, shall we? Here we go. Oh, hang on. Oh, there we go. There's a little squeak. I knew, I knew it wouldn't let me down. Right. Oh, it's a very uh, squeezing, I was going to say. It's a very pleasing squeaky of the squeaky squeak of the cork. So... Oh, I could do that all day. We'll go for the full pull. Oh. Oh, well, it built it up with the squeak, but then didn't quite deliver with the uh, the full pull sound. So, never mind. Slightly disappointing on the cork sound, but don't worry, don't worry. It's just a bit of fun. Now then, let's have a bit of a waft of the thing, shall we? Hmm. Now that's interesting, because I, I thought, usually when you get these sort of real bold, strong flavoured gins, which is something specific like orange or strawberry or raspberry or, um, or what was that one, the Whitley Neal rhubarb and uh, ginger. Um, you usually, as soon as I take the cork out, it's it, even by putting it on the table there, it's sort of floating through the air and it's going up the nostrils. I'm not really getting much from this and I'm quite surprised because of the, you know, the intensity of the colour there. I thought that was going to be a really wham, bam, bam, big punch up the nostrils, but 
just smells like gin really maybe a tiny tiny hint of orange but nothing really uh, big and explosive so never mind doesn't really matter because we don't as i've always or as i always say we don't buy gin to be sniffing it we buy it to drink it so let's get it in the old glass shall we lovely right oh i'm a bit low on tonic here this looks a bit depressing let's see how we get on because i only tr i only drink many gin and tonics on these videos anyway as you know that's going to be a strong one. We're going to need to replace the tonic, I think. Luckily, I have one here ready to go. Right. Ah. Oh. Okay. You can tell I'm getting old because I can't get into my chair without making a noise like... Oh, it's very scary. Never mind. Right. Bit more tonic in there. Lovely. Right. Let's give that a blast, shall we? Got too many tops going on here. Stick them over there. Right. Here we go. Oh, okay. Why? Okay, okay. Oh, now this is interesting because I thought, given the intensity of the colour of that bottle, I thought that was going to be a real boom, a real rush of flavour. But it's actually, it's, I don't know if I poured it a bit weak. I don't think so. Let's try it again. Hang on. Oh, my God. Oh, I got something different that time. Right, right. Oh, Wow, okay, right, okay, that's gone past the funny noise days. I'll try and sort of condense that into uh, actual words. Um, so it's instead of a real wham bam, harsh, uh, strong, intense orange blast, it's very, very delicate. It's very, very subtle, but I like that. It's kind of nice. Let me have another. Mmm. I did actually read a little bit online. Uh, on a Facebook group that some people said that they found this a little bit weak and yeah but one person's weak is another person's subtle and I think that's really nice it's sometimes it can be a bit overpowering if they got one big flavor boom just going off like that but um what's interesting about this it's quite subtle and light orangey flavor but then so you, you you put it in your mouth you swallow you get all the oranginess but then you think where's the lime wow you take one breath you put it in your mouth you swallow you take a breath then the line comes afterwards. You get this sort of like a an aftertaste of of like really fresh limey, but only just a little bit in there. I mean, oh, it's a bit gassy. This. Hang on, let's go another go. Sorry. That is amazing. That is amazing. It's like a two tiered flavored gym. You first of all you get this orange, and then as I say, you swallow it down, and then up comes this sort of a blast of sort of. It's more of a, an essence, but it's swirling around the, 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 so the back of the throat and the nasal cavities. You almost kind of smell, it's like a lingering aftertaste of the lime. You kind of smell the lime almost, but inside your mouth, if you know what I mean. Let's try it with a little bit more, maybe I should have tried it a bit stronger. Maybe it's one of those gins that you can drink that's a little bit stronger. Let's show you that again, shall we? Yeah, yeah, oh yes, I tell you what, that's awesome. I do like that reminds me a bit like beef eater. I find I can always have beef eater a little bit stronger. Someone poured it for me once. I was in a, um, a club in London and someone poured me a beef eater like, without the measure and I was just like, whoa, that's going to get me really drunk. But it, it was quite a shock to start with. But it was actually really, really nice. And that's one of those gins you can drink a little bit strong. So go careful on this, is my advice, because you'll get totally wasted if you're not careful. But I tell you what, that is a lovely little gym. And, of course, as I say before, the best thing about it, well, it's not the best thing about it, but it's always nice when you get a, a really nice gin that's also really, really reasonably priced. It's like £15. That's like half of some of the some of the really good gins that I pay for. I mean, it, and some gins are even more than that. I was in the gin shop the other day, and this gin's, like, you see gins for, like, regularly for £45, £50. What's that, 60 over $60? It's madness. It's madness. So why? And, and also, I'd, I'd compare it to the um, the Tanqueray Sevilla, which I think is about £25, roughly, there or thereabouts. So, and this is £10 cheaper. So why? You've just got to beg the question, why would you spend that money, that extra £10 on the Tanqueray, when you've got something like this, which is just as good, if not arguably better, because it's got that bit of the, the the interesting essence of lime in there as well. To me, that is a no-brainer. I really, really liked the uh, Tanker Racer video. It's one of my most popular videos. But I tell you what, put them side by side, I think I might go for this one. I think I might go for this one. I'm going to have one more glass here. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So. Tanqueray, watch out because you have got a contender hot on your heels here with the old 
Grayson's Seville Orange Parisian Lime. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is at the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I keep forgetting to do this. I'm terrible. But you, you, please, if you like this, please don't forget to uh, press the subscribe button or uh, like or whatever you want to do. Um, and, and if you and, and I like Adam Warby, if you if you've got any ideas for gins for me to try, please get in touch. Put the comments in the section below. I'll reply to all of them all the time, and uh, I will endeavour to try that gin and get the video online for you. So I will see you next time, ladies and gentlemen. This has been No Nonsense Gin Reviews. I've been Bobby Freeman. This has been I keep forgetting the name Seville Orange and Parisian Lime Gin, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.